I thought I would do a little college bookshelf tour, um, mainly because my college bookshelf isn't that big, at least compared to what I have at home. I'm in that really like weird place when I'm almost sort of moved out because I'm in college, but I still live in like the dorm apartments, so I can't really move out. I don't know, I think it's pretty interesting to see what books people bring to college because one, if you're smart, unlike me, you don't bring that many because realistically you're not going to have the time to read that many books. I guess I should say I'm a third year, so this is my third rodeo and I still oh, definitely overpacked on books. Freshman year I brought just as many, sophomore year, just as many. Did I read them all? No. Will I ever learn? No. That's okay, that's part of the fun. Another reason is that, I don't know, at least for me, maybe, maybe I'm a little vain, but I feel like there's this part in my head that's like, what if someone cool comes over and they're like in your room and they look at your books and they judge you based off what books you have? That's like the make or break thing, even though, has literally anyone ever done that? No. It literally doesn't matter, but I don't know. I think the books you bring to college are how you want people to perceive you sometimes. Sometimes it's just what books you want to read for fun. I have a pretty good mix of both. Um, I'll let you guess which, which are which. It shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> okay, so this first book I had right here is the most beautiful book I brought with me and honestly one of the most beautiful books I own. This is, oh my god, <laughs> I can never say this. Anna Karenina? Is that how you say it? I used to say Karenina? 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 I'm not Russian, I don't know. Clown me for that? I don't care. Someone just tell me how to say it because I'm never gonna look it up. I'm never going to look it up. I've been wanting to read this for so long and I'm just, I think in 2019, I read like the first hundred or so pages. It was December, 2019, and I wanted to finish my reading goal, which was 50 books last year. And this was just taking too much time. So I put her aside so I could read some more short books to finish my goal. And I just never picked it back up. Now I'm in the same boat where I'm like 12 books behind my reading goal. So she's not getting read this year. I'll go ahead and tell you that, but maybe the first of next year. The next book is The Chestnut Man. This one I got last January. I got it on my birthday. Have I read it since last January? No. <laughs> no. So that's going to be a common theme. I love to buy books. Um, reading the books you buy, it's unheard of. I got it because it's like a fun, I don't know that it's fun. I haven't read it. It's a thriller is what I do know and it kind of has um like Blair Witch vibes. I think it's kind of like maybe a serial killer and he leaves behind this chestnut man with each killing. I think I've got The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. People have not stopped talking about this since it came out and I really should have read it by now but again I just have it. This next book is Interior Chinatown. We got those, what are these called? Deckled? Deckled? I don't know what they're called. This is definitely a book that I bought because the cover is just stunning. I <laughs> I do kind of feel bad being like, yeah, I haven't read any of these. I don't feel bad, but it makes me feel a little bit silly. But you know what? I brought these with me with the intention of reading them. So of course they're not read. I maybe also should state that I'm filming this in November and I've been here since August. So I have read, I did read some of the books I brought, but I already took them home. I should have filmed this video in August, but it's November. So these are some new books I brought from home when I went over Thanksgiving. Oh my God, it's not November, it's December. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've read any of these actually, so I should just stop saying that. Anyways, I don't really know what this is about, but I know that this cover is, as a graphic design major who's hoping to design book covers, this, this is the blueprint. Next, you already know what it is. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? I don't know. I have New Moon here with me. I, huge Twilight fan. If you know anything about me, 
You know I love Twilight. However, I am an imposter. I have only read the first and the third Twilight. Why? Why the first and the third? So when New Moon came out, I saw in theaters, of course, and spoiler alert if you haven't seen it or you don't know, at the end of New Moon, Edward says to Bella, marry me. Me being 10 years old, when it cuts to black, Edward's like, marry me. I'm like, what's gonna happen next? So I immediately went out, I bought the third book. I didn't read New Moon, because I had just seen the movie. I bought the third book, I read it in one sitting. It's like nearly 600 pages, I think. I was like 10. I read it in one sitting, and then I wasn't allowed to read the fourth book because of the sex scene. So for the longest time, I had only read the third one, and I recently read Twilight back in, I think, August. So I brought New Moon with me to read as a little comfort read. Honestly, I'll probably read this before the end of the year because if 10-year-old me could read Eclipse in one sitting, then hopefully 20-year-old me can read New Moon in close to one sitting. I've got the Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. I brought this with me because it's kind of like a murder mystery. As far as I know, I think people have kind of compared it to like Agatha Christie, which it's kind of ironic because I don't really like Agatha Christie, so maybe I won't like this. I, I don't know. I usually don't really like mysteries or just like straight, straight up mysteries. Like every book should have a mystery, but straight mystery just doesn't sit well with me. I don't know why. This next one is Shop Girl by Steve Martin. Yes, you heard that right. Steve Martin. Did anyone else know that he wrote books? because I definitely did not. I found this in Half Price Books a while ago and I picked it up because I think the cover is really cool. Or like, I just like the photo on there and it's very short. So of course I brought it with me because every once in a while you just need a, you just need a little short book. Okay, I lied. I said I hadn't read any of these books, but I have read this one, Lord of the Flies. This is Old Reliable, one of my high school favorites. This one is called Black Moon. It's got these pages as well. I might just like have a thing for books with these pages. I don't really remember what this is about. So I just kind of skimmed the back and it's like everyone in this town has insomnia and it's like if you can sleep, then that's special or something. I don't know, it's kind of like, I guess everyone starts to go mad because no one in this town is sleeping. Everyone has insomnia. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this. Has anyone read this? Is it good? I've got The Rules of Magic here with me. It's kind of a, it's a witch book. It's not kind of, it, it is a witch book. It follows like generations of this family of witches. And I think it's kind of, yeah, it's set in 1960s New York City, which is just great, great vibes. I kind of don't like books that switch through generations though. And I usually don't even really like books that switch point of view a lot. So that might not sit well with me, but I've heard good things about it and everything else is looking good. So hopefully it's good. I've got The Haunting of Hill House here with me. I bought this, I think freshman year after watching the show because the show is fantastic. If you haven't seen this yet, you gotta watch it. I actually just finished Bly Manor as well. Another banger. I should have read this in like October. That would have been a nice spooky little book, but I didn't get around to it, so. I've got To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I got this at a flea market. This couple here locally, they sell books at like flea markets around the city. And I've run into them a few times and I always try and buy books from them. And I just wanted to read something by Virginia Woolf. I also thought this cover was pretty cool. It kind of looks like hand-drawn. It probably was hand-drawn. So another time I ran into them, I bought The Waves. I read, what is that book? All the Bright Places? Yeah, that's what it is. I read that and they kind of in it quote Virginia Woolf and they quote this one a lot. Um, I didn't love that book, so interesting that it like made me pick up a book that they were talking about, but all the lines they quoted in, they quoted from this in the book. I really liked, so I picked this up as well. Here I have Slaughterhouse Five. This is another kind of classic. What is the definition of a classic? Does anyone really know? 
I got this at a used bookstore. It was cheap and I haven't read anything by Kurt Vonnegut yet. So I figured this would be a good place to start. And I really love all of his book covers. They all kind of look like this, the same style with like the bold cover and like a little illustration. I think they all look very nice together. So maybe I will collect some more and they will look nice on my bookshelf. I don't know why I brought so many like high school English books with me, um, but I have 1984. This is actually, I didn't read this in high school. Um, I don't know why, we just weren't required to. And I feel like everyone has read it and people reference it all the time. Um, I read Animal Farm, I love Animal Farm, but I just haven't read this one yet. This is Slade House, more of, more of this. I picked this up at Half Price Books a while ago because you open it up and it's like a cutout, but it's got this really cool map. And just like the whole design of this book, wow, hi. <laughs> Hi. The whole design of this book is just really nice. I think this is another like mystery Agatha Christie-esque book, um, which is funny because I literally just stated that I didn't like that kind of book, but sometimes when a book is pretty enough, you buy it anyway. This one's called The Circus. This is one that I recently picked up at the bookstore. I just kind of picked it up off the shelf. The cover just kind of caught my eye. I like that kind of line art. I thought the colors were cool. It's purple. Um, it has a really interesting premise. It seems like the kind of book where maybe the main character is unreliable or you just kind of don't know what's going on, like what the whole truth is. Um, and I love, I love unreliable narrators. So that's why I picked this one up. Sticking to the theme of high school, is high school English books. I've got The Catcher in the Rye. Um, I like just got this at Half Price Books. This is one of my favorite book covers of all time. I just think everything about it is just so nice. The colors, the illustration, and I don't really know anything about Catcher in the Rye, if I'm being honest. So I don't really know what this illustration means or has to do with the book, but golly gee. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Golly gee, am I excited to learn. This is a collection of poems by Sylvia Plath. I got this little book, this little edition, uh, when I was in New Orleans. Every once in a while, I'm just like, I want to read a sad little poem and think sad little thoughts. So I read some of this. Moving down to this area, this is like the overflow that should probably just go right here but a lot of them don't fit vertically and I don't like the way that two stacks look for some reason. It doesn't look much better just being stacked there, but next I have Good Omens. This is actually what I'm currently reading. I'm about halfway through. I didn't initially bring this with me to school, but when I was home over Thanksgiving, I finished the book I brought with me. So I picked something up off my shelf at home and this was that. Next I have I don't know how to say this. Candide? Is that? I feel like I'm making a fool out of myself by not knowing how to say these things, but Candide, this 18th century classic, is actually a savage satiric thrust at philosophical optimism that proclaims all <laughs> that proclaims that all disasters and human suffering are part of a benevolent cosmic plan. I like short little books like this. Short little book. I like short little books. I like Voltaire. I, I have never read Voltaire. I don't, I don't know that I like this, but I like satire. So hopefully I will. Next, I have this pretty, I don't know, interesting looking book. I got this at the, I think it's called the like nostalgic or like the classic. No, I think it's called nostalgic, the nostalgic. Oh my God, I just said that so many times. The nostalgic shelf at Half Price Books. Um, it's where they have like a lot of these leather bound books and they're honestly not that expensive. I think this one was like five or ten dollars and I just picked it up because because it looks so what's the word? Unique? Interesting? Cool? Fun? My rule with these kind of books is that I won't buy it unless I think I would actually read it. Um, and this one when I looked it up on Goodreads said it's similar to Valley of the Dolls which I have not read but 
that's one that's been on my list for a while. This, I believe, is from the 19th century. So it's just kind of like the same kind of concept of, God, this is so hard to talk about when I haven't actually read The Valley of the Dolls either, so I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I think it has something to do with like alcoholism, basically. Do I even have to say anything? This is one that everyone is talking about right now. It's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I have heard so many good things about this. Something about Addie LaRue maybe makes a deal, deal with the devil. I don't know if that's actually what it is. Makes some kind of deal. She lives forever, but I think everyone who gets to know her forgets about her or like she can't be remembered. Something. This one is the Southerner... The Southerner Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. Um, this one's by Grady Hendrix. I read his other book, My Best Friend's Exorcism, back in the spring, based off one of my friend's recommendations. Um, it was one of her favorite books. She loved it. I thought that one was pretty fun. I think I gave it like three stars because it just wasn't like, it didn't wow me, but it was like, it was a fun little read. And so she, the same friend actually lent me this copy. It just seems fun. It's like this group of, I think, middle-aged women that like have this book club and they suspect that like vampires are in their town or something and I guess they're slaying vampires. This one was given to me by the same friend. She let me borrow it, um, The Silent Patient. She also loved it. Um, I think she recommended this one more highly over that one. It's like a thriller and she told me that there's some good plot twist in it, I believe. This is Olive's Ocean. I don't, straight up, I don't know anything about this book. I bought it. Oh, look, we got these fun little pages. I don't know. Oh my god. Oh my god. I straight up cannot feel my foot, like, at all. Okay. I'm back. I had to stop filming because I was sitting on my feet for so long that I like could not feel them. So this is Olive's Ocean. It's pretty short and it's got <laughs> big font, big column, love that. And it got this Newbery Honor Award. Do you remember like every book in elementary school had this? And like, I don't know, this is the first time I've seen this in years. Maybe that means this is like like a middle grade book. It might be. I've been like really reading a lot of middle grade recently. So if it is, I wouldn't mind. I would probably like it more, honestly. We've got The Devil All the Time. Everyone's kind of been talking about this recently with the new Netflix movie that came out with Robert Pattinson. I've heard this book is like really disturbing, creepy. Um, and I like that. <laughs> We've got... Breakfast at Tiffany's, Truman Capote. I read a book by Truman Capote um, back in, I think January, maybe February, Other Voices, Other Rooms, and it really blew me away. It was really great. It was one of my favorites of the year. Other Voices, Other Rooms is like a Southern Gothic novel, and I am a fiend for a Gothic novel, so yeah, I loved that book and I loved his writing style. I think most people know what Breakfast at Tiffany's is, that famous movie with Audrey Hepburn. If you didn't know, it is a novel. This book is called Warlight. It is... Well, I know it's a war novel. That means it's probably about World War II because apparently that's like the only war that you're allowed to write about. This is actually... it's an arc. I used to work at Barnes & Noble in high school and if you didn't know, if you're an employee, they have a shelf in the break room that's just filled with arcs that publishers that publishers send just any of the employees to read, which if you didn't know, an arc is an advanced reader's copy, which means it's like an edition that is sent out to people who review books, sometimes YouTubers, booksellers at Barnes & Noble, I guess to kind of read it and review it before it's actually out. This is a Clockwork Orange. Um, my friend Ella gave this to me because she somehow ordered two copies of it by accident. Don't know. I, like most people, like to read the book before I see the movie. I haven't seen the movie yet, so I would like to read this first. This one is Emma by Jane Austen. I bought this one back in the spring or I guess winter right before the new movie came out because I was like I'm gonna read it before the movie comes out 
um, but I did not. But I did actually watch Emma, the new Emma movie, because I love period pieces for the girls. This one is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is signed. I've had this literally since early high school. Still have never read it, but I brought it with me just in case I wanted to read a sad little young adult book. I really love the movie, so I assume I love the book. This one is The Woman in the Window. It is soon to be a major motion picture. I think this was supposed to come out like maybe back in the fall, but I don't know that it ever did because of Corona. This is like your typical thriller. You know a thriller's good when it has the woman or the girls. Why is every thriller like the woman, the girls? It doesn't mean it's good, but it means it's a thriller and it means I'm gonna buy it. I have The Martian here with me, which is not a book I ever thought I would pick up. I'm not huge on sci-fi. I mean, I do like sci-fi, but I'm not huge on space books. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I like sci-fi on Earth, but I don't like going into space because it really makes me anxious. Um, but I think it was Noelle Gallagher who, she said something on her channel about this being like one of the funniest books she's read. And I think maybe she said she didn't like sci-fi either, but she still enjoyed it. So I saw it half price books and I was like, okay this one is to kill a kingdom um i've heard lots of great things about this mainly on twitter uh i believe this is like a retelling of maybe it's not i want to say it's like a retelling of the little mermaid but like enemies to lovers but i don't know that it's that that's true i think the main character is a mermaid a book club i'm in on twitter read this back in September, I think, which I guess I should very loosely say a book club I'm in because to date I have not read a single book that we picked out for the month, but I have it here with me. I have a copy of Dune. I love this cover. I think most people know kind of what this is about. It's like, as far as I know, your typical kind of like chosen one sci-fi story. And honestly, it is so hard for me to follow along. I rented the audiobook from the library back in, I think June, and I got like an hour through it. It's like 21 hours. And I had no clue what was going on. I think I just have to push through and get through that kind of like confusing world building aspect. That's what I really hate about like sci-fi and high fantasy. <laughs> people are gonna like hate me for this but I hate world building that's like so confusing that I like don't know what's going on until like the second book you know like I just want to know I like fantasy but I like when it's like fantasy in the modern world so that's not what this is this one is Caraval did I say that right is it Caraville Caraval I feel like this was really popular on book two back when it first came out in 2017 and I got to chapter four and I remember I put it down because it was just a little too juvenile for me. Even at 17, I was like, I didn't love the writing. But again, I didn't really give it a chance. I only got four chapters in, but I've heard lots of great things about it. And it seems like an interesting concept. This was another book that my Twitter book club read. I, of course, did not read it. Okay, we have finally made it. The last book on my shelf is Catherine the Great, The Portrait of a Woman. Very different from all the other books I have on my shelf. I think this is the only nonfiction book I have. I've always been really interested in Catherine the Great. What got me more reinterested in her recently was watching The Great on Hulu. Fantastic show, could not recommend it more, but it is just not historically accurate at all. Um, and I know that, so that's why I wanted to read this, because I want to know the truth. So hopefully I'll read this at the start of 2021, and it'll be great. Thank you for sticking with me through that. This is Ripley, by the way. My little baby. <laughs> Again, thank you for watching. Please, if you've read any of these books, let me know. What I really want is just for people to find people to talk to about books because pandemic life is pretty lonely 
And literally all I want to do is talk to people about books, please. Talk to me. <laughs> I don't know how to end this. Um, bye. <laughs>